Roll call, please. Hanna here. Sullivan here. Perillo here. Lorik here. Kavich here. Wisikowski here. Aldani here. Shepard here. All right. Um, approval of the minutes of June 25th. Would everybody please take a look at the minutes? Any corrections, omissions? Um, if not, we will. Um, that was a short meeting. I'm sure it was. Um, we'll move for a motion. Seaford moves to approve the minutes of June 25th, 2019. Hannah seconds. Roll call. Hannah aye. Sullivan aye. Hello, aye. Lorik aye. Kavich aye. Uzikowski abstains. Lani aye. Seaford aye. Uh, number four, significant common council actions. Carry. There were none. All right. Wrap that one up. All right, new business. Uh, item 5A is conditions and restrictions. We're going to review the conditions and restrictions for a request for Mod Homes to rezone, uh, rezone to RD1, two family residential and established planned unit development for the property at 1073 South Howell. Gary. The Common Council reviewed and approved of the rezone and PUD at a public hearing on. June 18th, and remanded these conditions and restrictions back to the Plan Commission. So if you turn to the conditions and restrictions in your packet, we'll go over some of the highlights. Page 1 of 12, under 1, subsection L, locations of flood hazard areas shall be field verified. If you turn to page 2 of 12, under site and use restrictions, maintenance and operation requirements, there shall be a maximum of 85 residential units allowed within the PUD. Accessory buildings, a clubhouse, and a pool may be permitted so long as they are compliant with all applicable provisions of the municipal code and these conditions and restrictions. The clubhouse and pool shall be constructed as part of the initial phase of the development and must be completed prior to or concurrent with the issuance of occupancy permits for any residential building. Deed restrictions, which are private, and condominium bylaws, while not enforceable through the city, to the extent that they do not violate municipal code or these conditions and restrictions, shall be reviewed and approved by the plan commission prior to the development of each phase. Under parking and access, you will note that both A and B refer to specific models for parking requirements. Jefferson and Kimberly models under A shall have at minimum an attached one car garage and under B, the Tenton, Floridian, and El Paso models shall have at minimum an attached two-car garage. In any case, there shall be a minimum 20-foot-long adjacent driveway to allow for a parking of at least two additional vehicles that do not obstruct the sidewalk or driveway. On page 3 of 12, under signs, Development signage for this planned unit development shall be limited to one monument sign in conformance with municipal code. All development signage must be reviewed by the Plan Commission prior to the issuance of a sign permit, and development signs shall not encroach upon required vision triangles. Under Section 8 for sidewalks, you will note that there are a couple of um, additional categories than we usually have for PUDs. We have a front and street sidewalk setback to private street and sidewalk for principal structure and attached garages, as well as accessory structures and parking. There is one change that has been requested. Instead of 15 feet for us front and street setback for principal structures, the request is for 14 feet. Between structures shall be 12 feet. To the exterior of the PUD, all structures shall maintain a 30-foot setback, 15 feet to all floodway areas, and 10 feet to all wetland areas within the C1 Shoreland Wetland Conservancy District. Attached garages shall be at least 20 feet from the front and street. Under time of compliance, this has 18 months for commencement of construction. And all other regulations within this document are what we normally see with PUDs, including regulations that are not ours, violations and penalties, revocation, and acknowledgement. If the Plan Commission is satisfied with these conditions and restrictions, there is a suggested motion that the Plan Commission recommends that the Common Council adopts the conditions and restrictions 
as part of the single family residential plan unit development for the property at 10730 South Howe Avenue. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, would the applicant like to say a few words on, on your behalf uh, before we start? Um, anything? No? Okay. <laughs> um, you may be called up to answer some questions going forward. So um, we are not really in a public hearing, but we do have some requests for questions. So we're going to take the questions from uh, the residents first. Uh, we'll gather them up. We'll try to answer them all in one big group unless they can be answered very quickly by either A, the applicant, or staff. So, uh, John Gazorian, again, come on up, sir. Oh, never mind. I got to pay attention closer. Um, sorry about that. Uh, Josh, Josh. Yep, Josh. What's that? Oh, you just want it red. Really do got to pay attention. Okay, uh, the uh, comment is: Do the existing conditions and restrictions include anything related to the hours of operations for both the dog park and the clubhouse complex? If not, uh, can they be? I think it's included. So we'll get to that one. Uh, Derek, Travis. Dave, oh, that's the applicant. I'm just striking out here. How about Aaron? <laughs> oh, that's 5F2. Everybody's here for the school. Holy cow. Okay. <laughs> um, we'll open it up to questions from the uh, commission. Where you want to start? Fred, anything? I, I was just curious about the lot size for each unit. Do we have a dimension on that, Carrie? We requested that the general development plan actually remove the lot, the quote unquote lots around the homes because they weren't actually lots. They would be part of the condo development. And it was confusing because the setbacks are to the outer perimeter on, of the lot, which is the entire acreage. So it's not shown on this general development plan. They do have lot layouts, if you will, for each individual home. I do not have the dimensions in front of me. Um, before we move on, can anybody answer the dog park question um, and clubhouse? Will the clubhouse have set open times? Applicant, maybe you can handle this one for us. Name and address, please. Sure. Jeremy Samatis, 670 North Park, Glen Ellen, Illinois. Dog park would be standard hours of operation, um, sun up, sun down. No plans for any additional lighting, nighttime, nighttime, anything of that nature. The clubhouse would have the same rules except for the uh, uh, fitness center, which has its own access with a card. We're planning on doing you know, remote key card entry, which would be open to our residents access 24 hours a day. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, you have to come to the, you got to come up here and, if you want, come on up. I'll allow it. Yeah, come on up. Name and address. I thought this was, we were all going to get, you know, little time to speak up, but that's not No, basically, we're not going through the public hearing type phase of what we're doing, but we are, it is a public meeting, so I'll allow, I'll allow you guys to My speak. name's Mike Sherman. I own a house at 10811 South Christina Court, which backs up directly to the development. I've been involved in a lot of developments being the developer and also going against them uh, most recently probably heard about the mlg industrial park east of 43 in grafton maybe you haven't but that was one where we worked together with the community to uh, get something that worked for everyone so i'm big on working and being good neighbors i'm a capitalist i get the development um i've spoken to a lot of the neighbors that have been negatively impacted by this and there's, there's one thing that really stands out, you know, contention that I think is unconscionable that both the developer and you as a planning commission would allow, and that's a dog park in our backyards. Um, you don't see that in developments. You know, and particularly in this case, it's been put behind the garages 
of the DeSanto development homes, the 85 are, you know, you're gonna be out of sight, but it's gonna be directly in our backyards where our decks are set, where we're you know, looking out at the sunset. We've been there 15 years, paid our taxes, voted diligently. This dog part is a minor luxury to the DeSanto development on what has been a, a home run, or I'd say a, a grand slam, right? A PUD going in there with all these details. I've done developments, I would kill to get that <laughs> in, uh, out, out in Grafton. Okay, where I'm doing something. This is one thing that if DeSanto really says, I've heard him say a couple of times, I wanna be a good neighbor. This is one minor thing that could be stricken from the detailed plan, it's not too late, and could make a huge difference in the quality of life for your constituents, you're probably appointed, excuse me, but constituents of, the, of yourself, Mr. Mayor and the others, that will take a little bit of the salt out of the wound we have dogs, Doberman, Pitchers, Pit Bulls. They're going to wonder who are these 100 dogs hanging out in our backyard, right? There's going to be fights. Every one of these people, I've talked to them that you know, live in that vicinity, are going to be calling in complaints. Your people are going to have to deal with it. Their dogs are going to be probably getting into battles. If a dog comes on the land, their land, which we know dogs don't know boundaries, right? This is a wetland. Dogs are going to run onto our properties. It's going to be trespass. Um, we can't put a fence in there because it's wetland. We've been respectful of the DNR requirements. And now all of a sudden we're gonna have potentially hundreds of dogs, right? I mean, 85 rentals, people have multiple dogs. So this is a, this is a minor thing that you guys could do for all of us. Um, and if not, I guarantee you the, the residents are, will be up in arms. I mean, planning big signs that say, stay away, trying to disrupt the sales of you know, the properties. Like I say, it's just, it doesn't need to be this way. I've done a lot of this kind of work. This is a minor thing you guys could do for the community and to show everyone that you're not just for development, you do care about the people who have been here long-term. Okay, point well taken, uh, very good point. So um, I had not thought about in that context. This is actually the first time I actually heard that. Um, would, you, would the applicant like to kind of address it? Or you wanna come on up? Sure. Is this a is this a deal breaker on the deal? Steve Sorensen, um, Von Reason and Roper, the attorney for the uh, developer. Um, it's always very difficult to fight something that doesn't exist. The presumption there's going to be hundreds and hundreds of dogs running around in this dog park. I, I presume you have a municipal dog park, and I'll bet you never have hundreds upon hundreds of dogs running around. But what I would say, and, and on behalf of the developer, is that if it becomes a problem, we understand we have to deal with it. And if it becomes a problem that it becomes a public nuisance, I've read your ordinances, and we will deal with it, and we'll have to deal with it. Right now, because of the nature of the development, the concept of using this area to have people take their dogs for a run or a walk or whatever. Um, if it becomes a problem, we'll get rid of it. If it's not a problem, I don't know why we should get rid of it in advance. It's kind of like understand that you have the tools that are available to you if it does become the problem. And I can assure you that we will um, if it's a problem because it'll be a problem to us too. If there's hundreds of dogs running all over the place and causing problems, it's gonna be a problem for our development too. That's really, it, if you didn't have the tools, I'd say, yeah, do something, but you have the tools. You have the tools in your ordinances and we respect that and we will do something. So I can assure you of that. Thank you, appreciate that. Um, come on up, ma'am. My name is Kay Mickley Can you Ferreira. pull the microphone down? You gotta be on the mic. I live at 431 East Jordan Lane, which is the corner of Jordan and Christina. I live across from the development. Um, I've had a dog almost the entire 14 years that I've lived in this subdivision. Right now I have two. And um, I do have a fenced-in backyard, but my dogs were used to walking long before we ever put the fence up and they still expect me to walk them around the block. Um, if you have a dog, you don't need a dog park. There's sidewalks in our subdivision. There's sidewalks planned in that subdivision. Um, I, I think his name's Jack White. 
Mike, uh, if, if it's a problem for those homeowners that are bordering up to it, um, good dog owners walk their dogs. My dogs need to be exercised because otherwise they're so squirrely I don't even want them in my house. So. Um, Sorry, you have to be on the microphone. You can't speak from the audience. I've never taken my dogs to a dog park because, like I said, we don't need it. Okay, and well taken. Come on up, ma'am. Name and address, please. April Schakowsky, 10820 South Jessica Drive. Been here about 17 years. Very nice, quiet neighborhood. Already we've experienced way too many accidents on the freeway. And with those accidents comes more traffic. And with that extra traffic, it takes forever to get out of my subdivision. And now you're going to put 85 homes there with possibly people that have up to four cars each, maybe. I could care less about the dog park. But the traffic is what concerns me. And again, the state is going to have to do is going to have to manage your traffic because Howell Avenue is a state highway, and they're going to have to work to make sure that they have safe in and out on of both sides of that. But that's not going to do anything for we are, me. Ma'am, we're on the conditions and restrictions right now. Okay, we, we really do have to stick to the agenda. We realize that traffic is getting heavier as the city's developing. And we're doing our best to accommodate for it and control it. Um, with things going on in the south and things on the interstate, this city's going to be very congested for the next year or so. We, we understand that. We're doing the best we can to control it. Um, and again, this this particular thing has been approved for for this particular uh, PUD project. So again, those cars will come in and out, but they're going to have to do it in a safe manner. The applicant's going to have to work with the state to accomplish that. I just feel that this there wasn't much effort put into thinking about our neighborhood and what we have to go through. I don't know if any of you live close by, but it's not going to bother you or be a nuisance to you if this happens. It will be on our part, and our area is very quiet. I, I understand that, ma'am, and, and there's been other areas of the city that's been impacted by development, too. And unfortunate, unfortunately for you and your point of view, it's happening in your backyard. Right, it was supposed to be Carrick's uh, okay. land at first. It was Carrick's land, and they sold it. Again, you still would have had homes and impact going on there. Right, but it would and have been homes. It would have been... These are homes also. These are homes also, and these are people that are going to move in, and they're going to be residents just like the rest of us, and we have to be respectful of that. too. I thought it was more of like a apartment complex. That's what everybody has been saying. No, they are single-family homes that can be used for rentals or as a condominium complex. So to me, that's really not a house. Why? Because they rent? It's a home. They're, but you, you're calling you, it a condo. Do you, do you realize that 5% of the real estate in Oak Creek, private single-family homes are being rented right now within neighborhoods? I can tell you the home right next door to me is a rental been that way for a number of years right it, so can, this is this is really no anywhere. different but again i'm not here to debate that we've we got over that point about two weeks ago well in the public i wasn't hearing. really aware of it until about a week or so ago so i'm here tonight to voice my concern and i feel i should be able to do that um if nobody else is opposed to it well you know then it goes but Again, I just feel that the traffic is going to be extremely bad. You've got, you've got FedEx. You've got um, all the, the the other the other commercial park across the way, and you've got kids in our neighborhood. And now you expect us to wait and wait and wait to get out of our subdivision or have to go all the way around down to Oakwood is what what we originally did when we were first moved in, because Elm didn't come all the way through. That's what I'm concerned about. And, and I understand that, and things are going to change. And, and as the traffic goes, the roads will change with them eventually, if, if needed and accommodated by the, the amount of traffic 
that the DOT regulates, uh, what the state deems should happen on Howell Avenue. Um, so there's a lot of factors with it. Once the interstate clears up, traffic patterns will change again. Right now, traffic patterns are, are being altered because of the interstate. We realize that. We're seeing a flood of traffic on Howell Avenue. Our police department's reporting all the way down to Nicholson as they're working on the roads. Right, I so get that. So what, what you're experiencing now may not be what it's going to be in the future, but I don't have a crystal ball to say what it's going to be. I live off 13th and Drexel. We put in an interchange. It impacted every home probably within a mile radius, without a doubt. I went from a subdivision similar to one you described to having a stoplight, to having to wait to get out of the subdivision because the city's growing. And it's, it's just part of the, the development of the city. It's, unfortunately, it's, it's affecting your neighborhood now. It's, it's creeping south. Okay, well, thank you for letting me talk. Oh, you're, you're welcome. Light is, uh, is name and a, name and address. Hey, Micklick Ferreira, and I live at 431 East Jordan Lane. Um, we talked about, or you guys talked about it in the last meeting. There is a park in the corporate subdivision across from your development, and um, I, when the sidewalk went through and the development went in, the sidewalks went in and in the part in the industrial development over there. I thought, oh, it's a great place to walk my dogs. And I walked a couple times across into that subdivision, and I only think I did it maybe twice because it's so hard. Even before they closed down the different ramps and stuff and a lot of traffic started getting diverted onto Howell Avenue, as you just discussed, it's very hard to get across with your dog or if it's a kid on a bike. And different people in the neighborhood said, nothing's going to get done. We're bringing this up and we're getting blown off. And they said, nothing's going to get done until somebody gets killed crossing the road. This is important, as important to you guys for your tenants as it is to the people in the neighborhood. And the fact that traffic is being diverted onto Howell Avenue right now is kind of an advantage for us to try and get a stop and go light at that intersection now before that traffic dies down a little bit and maybe we won't have enough. That needs to be a priority for everybody to do whatever they can to get a stop and go light there before someone's kid who maybe doesn't have permission to cross the road, but mom and dad are busy or whatever. Maybe they don't have rules like that. I always had rules like that for my kids. And my mom had rules like that for, for us when we were little. And my mom laughs about it now because it was always, we lived in West Dallas don't cross Greenfield Avenue, and yeah, it was going on. So it's really important that that busyness is considered for both the fact that residents have to get in and out of the subdivision, ours and theirs, and the fact that there's going to be pedestrians and bike riders and who knows what else cars that might get in an accident. It's important and it's something that we don't need to be enemies on this. We need to work together. And again, not saying it's not important. Again, keep in mind, that's a state highway. The applicant's going to have to work with the state. And Matt, can you just kind of comment on what the process is to petition the state to get something done on a state highway? What, what the applicant The fact will have. that there's a park there, that it's an attractive Hang nuisance. Hang on. The applicant would have to go through a traffic impact analysis, generally with the state of the part, or state of Wisconsin. Um, it is a connecting highway, um, but when it comes down to traffic and things that would be needed along there, we confer to uh, Department of Transportation on that. And we had actually asked the applicant to do so through the process and the design. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Conditions and restrictions. Weinberg, uh, address is 10833 Christina Court, so I'm just in the backyard of the proposed development. 
Um, I'll be mindful to not resurrect points that my um, community and, and neighbors have made, but I do want to address, Mr. Mayor, your comment initially to the developer was, would the concession of not building the dog park be a deal breaker? I didn't hear him answer that. I can understand the value that perhaps perceptions that would lend. Um, it's not as easy, in my opinion, when you bring a renter in. People rent homes, buy homes with their pets in mind. Just so to say later we'll get rid of it isn't reasonable. It's disruptive to bring families. And if you're looking to kind of, again, with the tenants of building a community, I would highly encourage you to consider that. I do feel that it is a small concession. I, I built my home there. I've been in there 15 years. This is very much a, an emotional argument than it is, you know, research and analytics, et cetera. When I look back to the last meeting and I attended, although I decided not to speak, I can recognize the stats, certainly that the developers have researched being in this business and certainly other community members around what noise pollution, light pollution, dog parks, et cetera, could lend. What I was disappointed by our, our council mates was the burden in being that you shifted it back to the community and the residents to prove what they were saying was right or wrong. We're not those folks that would be able to identify to a science of why you should consider not putting a stoplight in, not putting in lights, or to discount residents' concerns about the travel of noise. I would fully have expected our, the development group, if they're going to propose this, to be able to defend those arguments, those concerns. And because they did not, I feel you have met a wide community that's not supportive of it. They don't feel like they've been heard. In many cases, I mean, listening to last week's, the responses, I'm sorry, my opinion, felt very, sounded very condescending. And when the community residents feel like they're not being heard, they're being understanding, because again, the, the community is growing and we're supportive of that. But we have, I mean, that is our home. We've developed it. We're, ad we're adapting to the city's decision and, and respecting to rezone what I bought my property would always be thought as agriculture. Again, very ignorant and naive to how things could change, but this is turning things upside down in a sense to me. So I would kindly ask that you just reconsider and listen to some of the th these things that we're asking. To deal with a dog park is one thing, but you're really discounting and not listening to the disruption that noise and the traffic, et cetera, will occur. And because we're not here, I mean, and have the means to be able to provide you evidence, there is going to be those disruptions. And I would just ask that you kindly consider that. Thank you. Okay, um, going back on the conditions and restrictions on highlighted stuff, of, uh, this, is, this is our standard PUD. Um, we'll keep going right on down the line. Donnie, anything? No, I have no questions. Chris? Uh, I just, on the, on the dog park, that is, you know, a question that I think we need to feel a little, a little bit more because I, I do think that if you have sidewalks there uh, and roads that that they would be able to walk the dogs on the sidewalks or the road, so, you know, is a dog park really necessary is really the, the point I was driving at. Got it. We'll, we'll end up discussing that on the way. Um, Greg? <clears throat> I... We'll second the question on the dog park. Um, but as far as conditions and restrictions, are the hours, the question was brought up, hours for the dog park and the clubhouse, is that something that can be addressed and placed in the conditions uh, and restrictions? Good question. Yeah, good question. Because I, I didn't see it in here. We didn't actually have hours of operation for either of those whenever these conditions and restrictions were drafted. If the plan commission wishes to consider putting them in here, we certainly um, I'm just curious, and I understand it, sun up to sundown, but I don't want that to start waving to 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. and then all of a sudden it's open till midnight. And, well, and there is one consideration for the clubhouse, and that is clubhouses for um, developments like this typically end up renting out the facility to their um, to their tenants um, for parties or something like that that would go beyond the office hours per se. Um, so we would have to be mindful of making that d distinction within the conditions and restrictions should you want to place any kind of restriction on that hours. I'm assuming if they rent it out to a party or whatever, if there's noise complaints, they would still fall under the, the noise ordinance. Noise ordinance is time. always okay. in place. 
Uh, Dawn. I have one more question in regard to the um, dog park. Um, I own two dogs, so I do frequent the, the Oak Creek system, dog park system. What I don't know is the square feet that that's allotted for. So if you imagine, and I can appreciate, you're right, we don't know. We don't know how many dogs, less or more, but let's just assume it's an attractive, affordable development that people want to bring their pets to. And the city does allow two dogs. So I think it's certainly in the best case for you to consider the worst case initiative. Uh, scenario in the best case the worst case scenario is every renter is going to have two dogs in that square feet so if you're pet owners you have a sense of how again s shrink to areas increases more I guess non pet friendly activity and that is all things that could even in um, earshot again in my backyard I certainly will hear that and I have an underground fence again that was to honor the requirements that I have for my property. I'm not allowed to build a fence, et cetera. And so now this to me would irk my pets in, in the backyard to hear this constant um, banter from dogs, et cetera. So I just am curious about the square feet of the, of the dog part and whether it's adequate for the occupancy that's being proposed considering uh, with the worst case scenario in mind. Okay. Thank you. Um, back to you, Dawn. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple things. Um, it looks like the clubhouse is pretty far in the opposite corner of the residence, right? So we're not too, I mean, if it's too loud, it's not like it's in their backyards. And the dog park, yeah, it would be good to know how big the dog park is and whether you're planning to fence it um, or is it open area. Um, you know, to the residents, I live in the Drexeltown Square. 600 people live in this area, and I see at the most two or three dogs at a time in the square ever, um, unless it's dog days, which is this weekend, but um, know that they all aren't out there at the same time. Um, and this is, you know, this is a pretty populated dog area. So um, I'm not sure that you'll have is, you know, the, the concerns I understand, but I don't know that they'll, there's going to be 20 dogs at a time out there. Um, but yeah, my question would be whether it's fenced or um, how big the area is. Got it, Don? Yep. Yeah. None. Tina. I actually echo the dog uh, park concerns. I have dogs myself, and I lived in a condominium where I rented, and neighbors' dogs were always in my patio, and they were always having their business in my patio. So I kind of can see where they're coming from. And no matter what you do, there is no control over that because you don't want to have fights with your neighbors as well. You want to be a good neighbor. So even if you build a fence, it's going to be an issue. And especially like a couple of the residents indicated, why can't you just use the sidewalk to go walk your dogs? I don't really see. If you were in a downtown residential area, I can see the point of that park. But where we live out here, out in the open area, it's rural area, you can go walk your dogs and yet maintain a good neighborhood relationship. So I strongly recommend for you to consider the dog park portion of it. That's oh, it for me. Not having it or having not it? Not having it. Okay. Come on up, sir. Come on up, Steve. <laughs> nope, nope. <laughs> not allowed. <laughs> two things I want to point out is, one, the dog part's part of phase two. So it's not even part of phase one. So what we've discussed is... We don't need the approval of the dog park tonight. I mean, we'll, if you want to take it out of the concept, and then we can analyze as the people come into the, the residence in phase one over the next 18 months, if there's enough space for walking and stuff like that. And then when we come back, because under your conditions, we got to come back for phase two anyway, it said. So the planning commission, that's what it read, right? Not for conditions and restrictions, but for site plan approval. Yeah, so the site plan would include the dog park. In other words, we take it out the dog park out of this plan. If we wanted to bring it back as phase two, we'd come back, right, Carrie? So um, if we could get that graphic up that actually shows the proposed uh, development in, in the dog park, we, we have it in front of us, and it has a dotted line, and you can kind of see where each phase is being done as to what he's talking about for everybody in the audience. 
you know, it, it, our attempt is just trying to address the concerns of both where the dog's going to go and the concerns that we're hearing from the neighbors. And I think that's by I, taking it out right now. And, and again, I, I think that might be a, a valid compromise, um, to say the least. Um, again, I my question's kind of centered on the dog park, too, and my first question is, is it a deal breaker? I think this is something that we, we should probably look at. Um, again, like dogs, I'm not a dog owner anymore. Um, again, I don't have problems with dogs. I usually have problems with the dog owners being irresponsible owners, picking up after their dogs and having their dogs behave, things of that nature. But I do understand where you're coming from. Uh, my neighborhood has tons of dogs, uh, without a doubt. Uh, our park is a block away or whatever. They, they walk them there things of that nature. So uh, I think maybe that is something uh, when we do the site plan next time through on phase two. Can everybody kind of see uh, what, what the gentleman's talking about with the dotted line on phase one and phase two? So phase two would be the north end of the complex if I got my directions right. It's a big green blob that we don't know exactly how big it is, so we can't tell you exactly how big it is. Right. Um, and we're not the engineers. You know, and, and to Commissioner Carrillo's point, yeah, I don't know what the appropriate size is for a dog park and how many are in at any time. I will say this, I'm in the square quite a bit, um, and we have quite a bit of renters within the square area, and she made this point, there are a lot of dogs. and I mean, you'll see it this weekend, holy cow. So all you dog owners, come out to dog days. Just a quick plug for dog days in the square. Um, but again, I, I think it's something that, you know, we could look at if, if it's actually really necessary going on, uh, if it's needed in the future. Yeah, that's we're willing to say take it out tonight, and we'll come back with it in phase two if we really want it as a site plan addition. If that's okay with you all, um, I mean, I can't tell you the dogs aren't going to go there. Oh, well, no, <laughs> no, and, and, no, and you're correct. I mean, you know, you have a walking path back there. It's going to be a natural place for people to get exercise and take their dogs and, and hopefully they'll be respectful and, and pick up behind them and such but uh you know if it's just an open field they may decide to you know, exercise their dog there either way but well um, we'll probably we'll probably keep it as a, a park area you know rather than a developed area okay um i i don't think that's exactly a bad plan to tell you the truth myself um quite frankly i, I think I would rather see some sort of park area there that dogs are allowed in versus just a straight out dog park. So if it had picnic tables and things for people to hang out, it'd be all right. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Christina? I'm good, thank you. Okay. Um, kind of hit on the clubhouse. It. I. Shoot, he already said that. Is the clubhouse, you can just kind of give a yes or no. It, does it have like a common room, like a rental, or is it a gym? Oh, oh, can you come on up, please? Yeah, the current design has a common area, which would include um, a full kitchen, kind of an area with a TV for someone to enjoy the amenities, maybe do a cooking dinner if they want, or some refrigerated stuff, whatever sure. it might be. Then there is a separate uh, fitness area which would have its own entrance, and that's the one that would be open 24 hours. And this hours. would only be keyed to residents? Correct. There would be no outside renters. I, you know, no, nobody could come down there and just rent the room. Correct. And, and understand, too, I think I mentioned this last time in our presentation, that the uh, clubhouse will also have the leasing office as part of it. Okay. So the question was, you know, who's going to be there? How often would somebody, you know, be at the site? Obviously, if we're doing lease, leasing seven days a week, that's where the offices would be for any prospective resident to come in and uh, talk with our third-party management company. Okay. Um, I, I guess going back to Josh's questions, and I, it might be appropriate if, if you had hours of operation on, on what it's going to be. I know you said 24 hours, but um, it, it, I guess I could maybe understand that for the gym. People work different shifts, but, but at least for the common room, uh, most places do have hours of operation. So... Uh, commissioners, I, I would consider that one. Um, oh, yes, come on up, please. Just for the council, 
is, or excuse me, the commission is aware, the hours of operation will be set by the homeowners association just like they would be in a condominium association because those are the people that are most affected by noise and activities. So be assured that they'll be, just as in any type of multi residential use facility that the the condominium regulations already anticipate setting hours of operation and rules of operation with regard to the clubhouse so when it can be used how it can be used what what's going to be rented out for and all those type of things so it's not going to go unregulated that's i can assure you okay uh carrie kind of help me out there was a a place in here about the condo rules and they'll have to meet muni municipal code either way correct so in layman's terms we're kind of covered one way or the next aren't we so the code right now already regulates noise um, we have hours for um, excessive noise for when people can uh, issue complaints with the police department and that would be considered uh, something that would be in violation um, is in, as far as your um, question is concerned, Mayor, it's under 3F for the uh, condominium bylaws. Um, again, if we are going to be regulating hours of operation for the use of the clubhouse, we have to parse out what the office hours would be for uh, the leasing office versus the rental terms. Um, I can tell you that I am not familiar with any other project for which we've done that, just for consideration okay. so um, I would be asking for the plan Commission's input as to what you would want the hours of operation to be or the office or any part that we would be regulating with these conditions and restrictions cats um, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. for all of it or for just the leasing the, office in the, the room. Leasing office in the room, and then the, the workout areas should be twenty-four-seven availability with a with key card, so that's not open. Okay. That way, the six a.m. to ten p.m. takes care of the, the people in the leasing office who are probably going to be there maybe from eight o'clock to whatever you're going to do a, a rental or you're having a party there, at least you can come in and set up for your family party and have until 10 o'clock to clean it up. Or is that uh, too early? It seems early for a party. Okay. Depends on who you're with, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Flavor of you guys. Actually, um, I lived in a condominium where I was part of the home association uh, team that put those regulations together without mentioning any the name of that place, but we actually followed, we put those ordinances, uh, we followed the ordinance ours for the noise. So I would, yes, yeah, so I would recommend putting the ordinance ours in the rules and regulations, that we have done that. Yes. Thank you. That's a question. Uh, yes, come on up. My name is Kay McLeod. Thank you. They got to do the minutes. So you might want to <laughs> okay. pull a microphone now. Make sure you're on the mic. Um, for that clubhouse, what's the capacity of the clubhouse? And it looks like there's about 16 parking spaces there. Um, I just question if that's enough parking, if assuming every owner has two car, two or three cars. My husband and I are two people. I think we own four, <laughs> four cars. Actually, we own a few more. Our kids have them. But... Um, so if, if everybody's driveway is full and uh, I think the streets aren't going to be wide enough for parking, if the person that's having the party, everybody else that lives there is going to have the right to have a party in their own unit. So if, or if you have an overnight guest and they need to park somewhere. So I'm just questioning if there's enough parking there. Okay. Um, to my knowledge, the streets are DOT regulation size, so to speak. I don't know if that's the right terminology. So I do believe that it would just be like a standard subdivision for parking, uh, no different than the ones we live in. Parking uh, is going to be restricted to one side of the to street. To one side. So we, have a, a we always mm -hmm. have a clear span of 20 feet for okay. the road. Okay, so you do have one side of the road to park on. Um, the 16 spots, 
may have been based on, I don't know, Carrie, any, any input? I don't believe that we have anything in our code that regulates clubhouse parking per se. I can tell you that 16 spots is probably double what my current apartment clubhouse provides. If that's going to be sufficient, I would have to defer to the applicant to determine whether or not there are other um, similar developments that have that kind of parking for a clubhouse. Okay, so, uh, you know, I would have to assume that if you're going in there, you're either talking to a leasing agent, working out, or if you're having a party, um, you know, you're, you're bringing people in there. So, uh, with road access to park also. So, I don't know. Uh, how was it determined? Can you help again just kind of shed some light? Is this just, was it the aesthetics? Um, the availability of what you had. Uh, you got to come on up, sir. It's basically determined by the size of the clubhouse that's available to the public. Okay. It's if you have this, and I know you have it in your your packet. That clubhouse isn't very big. I mean, it's not going to have a significant party in it. It probably. 15, 20, 25 at the most. Now, the pool, vast, vast majority of the pool people are going to walk probably or ride a bicycle. Um, uh, it's not going to be a party pool. That's not what it's intended for. Um, Is the pool open for rental with the clubhouse? No, not right now. Because where I used to live, they, they rented both. So I yeah, just I, that's sure. not the intent. The intent of the pool is for the residents. Okay. And so is the clubhouse, really. But you could rent it to a clubhouse person. I mean, uh, one of the 85, or 83, or 85. Well, I can't remember. I, got, I, I see your point. <laughs> I got okay. It. Your answer is correct. Okay, so it's kind of based on the square footage of yeah. what's rentable. They feel it works for them. Yeah, I'm, I'm not all bent out of that one. Um, okay, uh, those are my notes on the clubhouse, the room, uh, and again, the dog park, and I think, I think that's kind of a work in progress. I think that's a, that's a compromise. Um, just very quickly, I mean, we do have a lot of residents here. Um, Kevin, can I get, get you just to flip through just the basic pictures of the home so everybody gets a view of what these proposals Oh, Carrie, you got it? Carrie, you're in control of this? I the wrong print. Man, I am just striking out here to give an orders tonight. So the Jefferson is a ranch. It's a two-bedroom with a single-car garage. Kimberly is also a ranch, two-bedroom. Tenton is a three-bedroom. Floridian is a three-bedroom, and El Paso is a three-bedroom. Thank you, Carrie. So you can kind of see this is really not going to have an apartment feel to it at all. It's going to be much more of a neighborhood feel to the whole thing going on uh, with a variety of different models and homes set up throughout the, the complex. Uh, and to just give you an idea, to shed a little light, maybe take care of some questions, maybe create more. Um, the Jefferson, there's going to be eight of them. So the Jefferson was the very first, correct? Uh, the Kimberly will have five. Uh, the Denton will have 11. The Florinian will have 27. And the El Paso, 34, spread throughout the complex. Just to give you an idea. Um, back to conditions and restrictions, so we'll kind of keep moving. Anything else from the commission? Nothing to my left. Anything on the right? No. I have no. Yes, ma'am, if you'd like to have the last word, call on a motion. 
My name is Christine Patzer, and my address is 115 East Elm Road. Um, I just have a question, and the first phase is going to be um, this fall, correct? Will all the streets and roads be put in for phase one and two prior to the first building on phase one? So all the streets will be put in this fall. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no more, uh, no other questions. Um, motion on 5A, please. If I could get oh, clarification, sorry, clarification sorry, from the Planning Commission. We are suggesting the removal of the dog park so we don't have to deal with hours of operation for that particular item, but I would like clarification from the Planning Commission on the hours proposed for the clubhouse. Are we putting something in the conditions and restrictions that says that the hours have to be in the condo bylaws or are we spelling them out in the PUD conditions and restrictions? Our, 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 in normal, our, conditions and restrictions. our normal business model, what do we do? We don't spell out clubhouse hours in any other development that I'm aware of. What options do we have, just hypothetically, if, if they come back and they're open till 1 in the morning in the condo laws or bylaws? Uh, nothing we can do then? If the PUD restricts the hours of operation, we can say it's in violation of the PUD. But if somebody's party goes till 1030 instead of 10, we have no real authority to go in there and police that. Right. I threw that out earlier, then make it 6 a.m., then midnight. I mean, we do have the noise ordinance, and that, that would control for anything any party, any noise complaint that goes above the decibel level set by code. It doesn't matter if it's in the clubhouse or if it's outside or wherever it is. So, um, and that's what you followed, Christina, correct? Yes, but we followed all the ordinance, not, not just for noise, because yes, they can control the noise, but there are other aspects of the party that we wanted to control as well. So I would strongly recommend putting something there in order for you to be able to police it and control it. But, and, and that's my that's yes. my question. If it yes. should be in the bylaws, which I think it should be, or should it also be in the PUD? Because again, I don't have any other example to go off of where we regulate the hours of operation for a clubhouse. The current proposed bylaws, which we've provided, reference the city of Oak Creek's requirements already. And it says that we can't amend these without your approval also. So you'll keep control of these bylaws as a plan commission. What does it have now? Right now it says we'll abide by all of the codes of ordinance of the city of Oak Creek. Okay, so okay. it does follow the ordinance. Yeah. Well, then we're on a level playing field now. Yeah, we're on the same playing field okay. that every other kind of, or per every other home in the city. All right. Okay. Yep. Yes. Then it seems like leaving. Anything else, Carrie, before we attempt a motion on this? Okay. Motion on 5A. Oracle move that the plan commission recommend that the common council adopt the conditions and restrictions as part of the single family residential planned unit development for the property at 10730 South Howell Avenue. Uh, need anything about the dog park? I think that with the discussion here, we will ask for an amended site plan that removes the dog park. Okay. Don't need it with any. And that amended plan will be included in the conditions and restrictions, the general development plan. Okay. Thank you. Here. Mr. Kalski will second. Roll call. Anna I. Sullivan I. Hello I. Lorik I. Kavich I. Mr. Kalski I. Lani I. Shepard I. Okay. So just to be clear, the dog park. One more time, Carrie, say it. It will be addressed in the general site plan. So the general development plan that's included in the conditions and restrictions, we will ask that it be updated to remove the dock park. So we'll work on that as we go towards phase two. Okay? Okay, uh, moving on. Item 5B is a minor land division. Uh, it's a certified survey map uh, submitted by the Junkuses, dividing and reconfiguring the properties at 3003 and 3025 East Elm Road. Gary. 
The proposal is to divide a portion of the rear of the property um, at 3003 to be combined with the golf course, which is south of that. So the area in yellow is the part that would be divided off and combined with the area to the south. And that is shown in this CSM right here. This is the overall um, division map, and then this is going into a little bit more detail. Um, each lot will be conforming for their respective districts, so the single-family residential home will remain on that uh, smaller lot and will conform to the RS3 district. And then the part that will be combined with the golf course property, um, that will obviously be conforming with P1 district requirements in terms of size. Wetland boundaries are unaffected by this proposal, so delineations are not required at this time. However, if there's any development that's proposed in the future, a delineation may be required. Um, and the portion that is going to be combined uh, with the larger parcel it is going to be required to be rezoned, and that's in the next agenda item. If the Plan Commission is satisfied with the CSM as proposed, there is a suggest suggested motion that the Plan Commission recommends to the Common Council that the certified survey map for the minor land division submitted by Mary Ellen Jonkis for the properties at 3003 and 3025 East Elm Road be approved with the stated condition. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Um, any questions from the commission? No, nothing going on left. Anything right? Okay. Nothing? Okay. Motion. Keeper moves that the plan commission recommends to the Common Council that the certified survey map, minor land division, submitted by Mary Allen Jonkis for the properties at 3003 and 3025 East Elm Road be approved with the following condition that all technical corrections, including but not limited to spelling errors, minor coordinate geometric corrections, and corrections required for the compliance with the Municipal Code and Wisconsin statutes are made prior to recording. Anna seconds. Roll call. Anna, aye. Sullivan, aye. Willow, aye. Lorik, aye. David, aye. Zagowski, aye. Lani, aye. Super nine. Okay, item 5C, uh, it's a review of a request uh, by the Junkuses once again to rezone the portion of the property that we just uh, divided at 3003 East Elm. Um, Carrie. So this is the portion, again, that's in yellow on the screen, and that's approximately 19,954, so just under 20,000 square feet. Um, and that's going to be combined with that property to the south again, the rezone request is for it to be P1 conforming conditional use, so that it's the same as the golf course. That's to bring it all under a single zoning and to avoid potential conflicts with different uh, district requirements if we were to leave it as RS3. So there is a suggested motion that the Plan Commission recommends to the Common Council that a portion of the property at 3003 East Elm Road be rezoned from RS3 single family residential to P1 conforming conditional use park district with no changes to the Flood Fringe or C1 Shoreland Wetland Conservancy or FW Floodway Districts. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Um, again, Commissioners, any, any problems going to park? All right. <laughs> uh, motion. Secret moves that the Plan Commission recommend, recommends to the Common Council that a portion of the property at 3003 East Elm Road be rezoned from RS3 single family residential district to P1 CCU park district, no changes to the flood fringe or the shoreline wetland conservancy or the floodway district after a public hearing. Is it call scale second? Roll call. Anna, aye. Sullivan, aye. Perlow, aye. Lorik, aye. David, aye. Kuzikowski, aye. Lani, aye. Siebert, aye. Uh, next, the review of a certified survey map combining and reconfiguring the properties at 3945 and 3955 and 3971 East Elm. Carrie. The proposal is to consolidate the parcels from three into two properties, and this is going to be for the parcels in red on the screen. And you will note that this certified survey map shows the uh, parcel in the middle with the dashed line. That parcel will actually be eliminated. 
the property being split between the two adjacent properties. So lot one and lot two will effectively absorb that land. Each lot will be in conformance with minimum lot sizes for the RS4 single family residential zoning district following this configuration. Um, the CSM was revised to address the minor errors that were listed in the report. That's actually included in your packets is the revised CSM. However, there is still one error, and that is on sheet four. It shows the right-of-way dedication under the Plan Commission approval. It should be under the Common Council approval. It's a minor change that can be addressed prior to recording. There was a staff request that we did not receive information regarding um, prior to this meeting, and that's whether any structures would be demolished. The code does limit um, accessory structures on single-family residential properties to a maximum of two unless there's prior plan commission approval. Um, and then also, we do have one existing accessory structure, structure shown on the CSM that's crossing property lines, and that's in violation of code. Um, if there are any uh, questions, I will be happy to try and address them. However, there is a suggested motion that the plan commission recommends to the Common Council that the certified survey map submitted by Derek Travis for the properties at 3945, 3955, and 3971 East Elm Road be approved, subject to conditions as would be amended. Um, you'll note in the report that there are some conditions that no longer are valid based on the uh, changes that have been made. Right. Um, getting the hang of this. Uh, Derek Travis, you, you wanted to say a few words. Come on up. Derek Travis, 3735 East Elm Road. Um, we would um, just... Uh, Remove the existing shed that was asked for. So, I just ask for your approval. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh boy, that was. Okay. Uh, questions from the commission, Christina. Yes, I do have a question. How many access do we have now after combining those parcels? We only have one access per parcel, right? Uh, there would be one driveway per parcel, correct. So if there is an existing driveway to that central parcel, which I don't actually know off the top of my head, um, that would be required to be removed, I believe. Yes, that's what she said. Yes. Uh, the driveway going to 3971 actually is um, just off that shed that wants to be removed. So it's still on that property of parcel two. Okay. So that driveway is by itself. So. Meaning? Um, the driveway going to 3971 is on that property. It was on 3955. So there's only two driveways that are serving yes. the two parcels. There's yes. not three. Now each, as you combine it to two parcels, each one will have a driveway. Their own driveway, yes. Yeah. yeah. Right now no, they're on one. Three no, 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 they're on two. My they're they're, they're, they're yes. on that middle. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, any other questions? Fred, oh. Donnie? Oh, Chris? George, Dawn? Okay, seeing none, motion. Donnie moves that the plan commission recommends to the Common Council that the certified survey map submitted by Derek Travis for the properties at 3945, 3955, and 3971 East Elm Road be approved the following conditions. One, that the setbacks to existing structures are included on the I, CSM. Can I interrupt for just a second? Uh, conditions one and two have been have been corrected, so we can go with three, four, and five. Continuing on three, that accessory structures meet all current relevant code requirements. Four, that the Common Council approval signature block includes the dedication of rights of way. Five, that all technical Corrections, including but not limited to spelling errors, minor coordination, geometry corrections, and corrections required for compliance with the Municipal Code and Wisconsin statutes are made prior to recording. Different seconds. Roll call. Anna, aye. Sullivan, aye. Willow, aye. Lorik, aye. Kavich, aye. Wisikowski, aye. Goldani, aye. Sleepert, aye. Okay. Uh, moving on, 5E, uh, plan review, review site and building and related plans submitted by Angela Golf Tremura Golf Collision Center for an addition to an existing building at the property at 161 West Marquette. Uh, Carrie. The proposal is for an addition to the south portion of the existing building and to relocate the existing fenced area that is on the south further south so that they can keep that. And the addition is approximately 6,000 square feet. 
This is for a production area for their metal shop, and I will zoom in so that you can get a better idea of what is existing and what is proposed. So essentially, um, on the left-hand side is what's existing. You will recall that there was an addition to the northwestern corner of the property um, not too long ago, actually. So what they are um, going to be adding, some parking along the west, about 19 parking stalls, and then this addition on the south side of the property, which will push that existing fenced area further south. Um, you will note that there are striped stalls behind that fenced area. That's where all of the cars that are going to be serviced must be parked, and that's per the conditional use permit, I believe. And um, any customer parking would be on the west and the north side, uh, also employee parking. The building itself, the addition will be constructed with white metal wall panels, which is supposed to match the existing building. Um, the metal panels are not approved primary building materials per code. However, um, a three-quarter majority approval of the plan commission uh, can provide a modification to that standard. This does match the existing building, and it would not be seen from the road, so it doesn't fit within the visible perimeter. There are two more. Uh, sections that I would like to draw the plan commission's attention to. There is um, there's a landscape plan that calls for a bit of landscaping on the north side of the proposed uh, parking extension. There should be more landscaping that would wrap around that to the extent that the parking would be more buffered from the road, however, there is a significant setback there. So staff will work with the applicant in order to meet those landscape requirements. But more importantly, um, due to the nature of the proposed addition and the additional asphalt for the area, um, this does fall under MMSD's requirements for green infrastructure requirements. So there is a condition within the approval recommending that they work with um, the engineering department to ensure that those MMSD green infrastructure requirements are met. So the suggested motion for the plan commission, if these plans are satisfactory, is that the plan commission approves the site plan submitted by Angela Goff Shimura of Goff's Collision Center for the property at 161 West Marquette Avenue, subject to conditions one through three. Mr. Mayor. Um, any questions from the commissioners? I do yes, have a question ahead, to Carrie. Carrie, looking at uh, one of the pages here where it says addition to Goff's Collision Center, Look like the landscaping is impacting the wetland, no? The wetland is on the far southeast corner. Yeah, so it seems like it's impacting and how they're going to do the grading there. I believe they're showing existing grades, but I don't believe that the wetlands are actually impacted where they're proposing to put the addition and the fenced area. Okay, I just want to make sure that it's not impacting. Okay. Um. Everybody's good with um, the metal panel to match the existing. I don't know if you're familiar with the site, but it's it's pretty isolated back there. Um, nothing from fire. You're, they're going to have to meet all all fire codes going forward, Mike. I would imagine. Okay. Um, and then again, working with uh, the DNR on the water management. Are we talking pavers? Anything like that? Um, the MMSD requirements for green infrastructure are pretty. Um pretty varied in terms of what they'll accept. Okay. Um, it's it, Anything over 5,000 or at least 5,000 square feet has to incorporate things like rain gardens or pavers or additional landscaping. And again, working with the engineering department and us, it probably can be incorporated into the landscape plan overall, okay. but that can be done. Okay, just so it gets done. That's all. Okay, um, anything else, commissioners? If not, motion. Oracle moved that the plan commission approves the site plans submitted by Angela Goff Chmura, Goff's Collision Center, for the property at 161 West Marquette Avenue with the following conditions. Number one, that all relevant code and conditional use requirements remain in effect. Number two, that a detailed landscape is submitted for review and approval by the Director of Community Development prior to submission of permit applications unless directed by the plan commission. Number three, that all revised plans, site building, and related plans, etc., are submitted in digital format for review and approval by the Department of Community Development prior to the submission of permit applications. Paper seconds. 
Roll call. And an aye. Sullivan aye. Perlow aye. Lorik aye. David aye. Sikowski aye. Lasagna aye. Super aye. And 5F is a plan review uh, for site building, landscape, lighting, and related plans submitted by Andrew Cromey, Oak Creek Franklin Joint School District for a gymnasium addition to the north side of the existing building, parking lot additions, and interior access modifications uh, for Shep Shepherd Hills Elementary at 9701 South Shepherd Hills. Gary? The modifications include uh, changes to the north access and the parking area, as well as relocation of the existing playground and the gym addition on the north. Yeah, go ahead. These are the existing conditions, and you will note that the as asphalt um, on the north side is not striped, and there is a single access point. This will become more important when you look at the proposed site plan, which shows a reconfiguration of that north access, some striped stalls, a relocated playground, and of course the gym addition. What should be noted immediately is that while the gym addition doesn't meet one of the setback requirements, this did go before the Board of Zoning Appeals and, re and received a variance for the proposed setback. All other setback requirements are met in these proposed plans. Again, access served on the north by a single access drive that will become two. There will be a single point of entry in on the north going one way, and there will be a two-way or a two-lane exit on the south where the existing access is. Um, again, striped stalls will be provided there. The playground is going to be relocated in the area in green, and the gym addition will be on the northwest corner of the building. The striped parking stalls that are on the north would be a total of 13. And you can't really see it on the screen here, but the dotted line uh, parking stalls for event parking, as noted on this, on this plan, are for 46 stalls. The gym itself is approximately 7,700 square feet. It would be constructed with precast concrete, exposed aggregate, precast reveals, uh, four inch brick, and everything to match the existing building. There's also profiled metal above the brick and windows on the east side of the gym with the mechanicals being proposed to be screened with a metal wall panel to match the color of the proposed profile metal panel. Again, metal panels are not listed as an approved acceptable exterior bu building material in the code. However, um, there can be a modification granted by a three-quarter majority approval of the plan commission. The landscape plans that have been submitted are missing a few details. Uh, with regard to code compliance, and we've, we've discussed that with the applicant. Uh, staff will continue to work with the applicant to ensure that all code requirements are met. There should be additional plantings added to the Shepherd Hills Drive frontage of the northerly parking lot to provide ground coverage, and there should also be a bit of landscaping put south of the uh, stripe stalls that are adjacent to the building. Again, green infrastructure per MMSD Chapter 13 requirements are going to be required for this proposal as well, and the applicant should work closely with the engineering department for compliance with those requirements. On the screen right now are the proposed elevations showing that there will be... There we go. That the billing will basically mirror what is existing. If the plan commission is satisfied with the plans as proposed, there is a suggested motion that the plan commission approves the site plan submitted by Andrew Cromie, Oak Creek Franklin Joint School District for the property at 9701 South Shepherd Hills Drive, subject to conditions one through three. Mr. Mick. Thank you, Terry. Um, we do have a couple of residents uh, that are looking to address the council and speak. So Aaron, would you like to come on up? Hi, I'm Erin Salerno, 9680 South Jasper Street. Um, I am concerned. We bought this house looking at a beautiful playground that I could see eye line for my two little children. And now it's being replaced with a gymnasium a solid wall. Um, above and beyond that, um, we're concerned about the safety. 
We have had to call the police multiple times on inappropriate behaviors happening in the playground and behind the school. As it sits right now, our property is directly behind that school. And we've had several people run through our yards to get away from the police that have come after we've called. We really would like a fence. Um, I don't think it's asking too much to ask for that safety for my children whose bedrooms are right at that window level. Um, I saw that in the landscaping plan that you have, you have trees that will be on my neighbor's yard, but not by mine. Uh, probably because that's where the existing school happens to be. Um, but I would really prefer if that could possibly be continued as well. But again, I strongly would rather prefer having a fence there instead uh, to connect with the one that's already by the sidewalk and for the steps that are next to the back of the school, uh, if that's at all possible. Um, secondly, can you talk to us about where lights or cameras for that back very, very long alleyway that is going to become, will be. Um, I would like to know if those are included in plans at all, if we'll have any sort of security back there now that it's going to be a back alley, pretty much. Um, the last thing that concerned me was the noise level from the dumpsters that are currently there. Um, it's very loud at about 4 a.m. and. I've heard today quite a bit about the noise ordinances. And having looked now at the noise ordinance, I see that it should not be coming until 7 a.m. Um, so can you tell me what I'm supposed to do about that? Um, you would con uh, Thank you for asking that question. That's a good question. Uh, contact our zoning administrator, and they will take it up with the school district, and it's a private contractor that, that provides that for the school. And okay. uh, they will have to inform the people to redo their routes. Um, I think you're correct in doing that. We were concerned with a solid uh, wall of building that that would get yeah, even louder. Just to so. get my directions. So you live north of the school? Um, west, west, thank you. West of the school. Jasper. Okay. Just trying to get my bearings. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You got more? No, that's actually <laughs> all I had. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, we'll we'll, we'll uh, try to answer those in kind as. Um, let's get the, the next next one up. John, called you up earlier. My name is John Jingojin, 9664 South Jasper. My house is uh, directly west of the new construction site. And uh, my concern, certainly, uh, I've had a couple of conversations with Mr. Cromie, and he's been more than receptive and easy to work with. My first concern was, of course, lighting and cameras, as Aaron had said. Second of all, I had mentioned that uh, food service comes at 3, 4, and 5 in the morning. A lot of these trucks have beepers. I can understand food service needs to come in the morning because of pedestrian traffic and uh, vehicle traffic. Accept that. However, now that this alleyway is sort of created, uh, any truck that's going to back down that or back away from it with a beeper is going to be uh, excessively loud. Mr. Cromie and I both discussed the fact that possibly uh, before, say, 6, 6.30 in the morning, those trucks could deliver to the east entrance of this new facility. I know it's a logistics thing that he might have to work out with the facilities people that are there and the contractors that bring it. Uh, I think that problem has possibly been solved. My concern is obviously, as Aaron had said, a fence. We've watched smoking, drinking, and public urination behind there. Now, it's not rampant, but it does happen. And it happens behind the school and up the stairs on top because the playground is there. Nobody's doing that stuff where you can see it from the street to the east. Once that uh, gymnasium gets built, this now becomes a very secluded area back there. Mm -hmm. I see that uh, they have proposed landscaping with some trees behind my property. Not that I'm opposed to trees, but I think you want me to be your eyes there. We have called several times and the windows have been left open on the first floor. Weather doesn't concern me. All it takes is a kid to punch a screen in. We've also called on one occasion when the doors were left open by the cleaning crew. 
I hear again, what if an animal goes in there, skunk meets a kid in the morning, and animal's rapid? I mean, here again, yeah. been there for 16 years, it doesn't happen all the time. But I would like to be able to see down there. I can understand where they want to put a buffer for noise. But if you look at the elevation levels, we're all basically looking at the second floor of the school. So as far as a noise buffer, I don't know if it would really do a lot. I would rather have a site a line for myself and my neighbors and a fence for security. Okay. Uh, the other real, um, one quick question, and I know you addressed it, Kerry. Where's the rainwater going from the top of this building? I mean, we do have a fair amount of marshy area behind there. Some of my property has got some wetland on it. I, I, Don't I, need it any I'll wetter. have the applicant answer, but I, I would think that it's going to the storm sewer and some, it's being managed in some way, shape, or form. But that that was just a okay. concern. But thank Try you to get for, it all answered. for hearing me out. So uh, with that, applicant is here. Come on up. Uh, name and address, please. Jason Christensen, Nielsen, Madsen, and Barber, 1458 Horizon Boulevard, Racine, Wisconsin. Uh, civil consultant uh, for the district. Um, I can address uh, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, the um, dumpsters uh, that they've mentioned coming in early morning and the beeping. Uh, the district has already reached out to uh, their waste management provider. And they're going to try to get that pushed back to about 730. Um, they can't push it much later than that just due to their schedule and the, you know, the, the route that they have to run. Um, they've also had um, discussions internally about those early morning deliveries being happened on the east side of the building rather than the west side. Again, to just alleviate the, the backing up and the beeping of the trucks in the, in the early morning. Um, during the variance hearing, we did, you know, hear about, um, you know, the concern from behind the buildings. There, there are no cameras um, around the school, but there is lighting along the walls, so that entire back will be lit up. It won't be dark, um, and that's shown on the uh, photometric plan there. I'd also like to point out that that lighting does stay on the school property, but the wall and the pavement will be lit up. We did add additional landscaping to that side based on some of the concerns that were heard during the variance hearing. Um, we originally did not propose any additional landscaping back there, but based on some of the concerns, they actually asked us to put that back there, and that's why it's there. Now we're kind of hearing maybe they don't want the landscaping back there. So, yeah, uh, right, and... Uh... I think that's something maybe the, the district should look at. I think we probably require some type of landscape. There would probably be some kind of landscaping requirements, but it, we wouldn't be opposed to if the district wanted to put in a fence. It would just be a matter of how would you control access so that the fence would be effective. And that would that would just be something that we would work with the applicant to try and address if a fence were to be proposed. And there is a stairway back there that leads to a sidewalk that goes to the street to the west there. So the even if there were a fence back there, there would still be an opening for whoever may be back there to uh, get away, if you say. Um, so I don't know that a fence will fully solve the problems back there. Um, we did offer up the landscaping in hopes that we can kind of uh, deaden some of the sound, block a little bit of the view. Um, so I guess we can see where we go from there. Um, yeah, I do see what you mean. Okay. Uh, questions from the commission? Oh, hey, while you're here, rainwater. Rainwater, yes. Yeah. So we do have to meet the uh, um, City of Oak Creek's ordinances as well as MMSD's green infrastructure. So we're trying to maintain the drainage patterns that are on the site. Um, some of it around the building addition will discharge to the west, to the wetland area that is out there right now. Um, and then the remainder of it will be being collected by storm sewers and discharged back to the east or 
Shepherd Hills Drive. Uh, we do have a small area of wetland fill um, that we are proposing for this. We already have our permit from the U.S. Army Corps, still waiting on the uh, DNR for that permit. Uh, thank you. Um, Fred, while you, yeah, uh, I have a hang on question up. for the hang applicant. On, hang on up here. I think they're going to have some questions for you. Fred? The proposed playground area addition of the 10,000 square feet, is that going to be blacktop or is it going to be grass? No, what, what you're seeing is the 10,000 square feet proposed playground. That's going to be like a, a wood chip material. That's where they're going to have climbing structures, swings, okay. and areas like that. The area to the east of that uh, what is shown as parking that's really just event parking during the day that's a paved playground for the students so there is no parking there during the day except for events thank you no comment i just have a comment about the fact that uh, go ahead please uh, i actually agree kind of with the um, residents there I think the fence, even though it may not wrap up around the playground, like you're saying, because there's a stairwell that goes to the sidewalk, it will be actually like an obstacle that will stop someone who's running or escaping from the officers. It will act like this, a tree or a shrub or something like this will not be as effective as a fence just blocking and causing that. And to answer Carrie's concern, maybe the height of the fence would be also an ideal to explore uh, how high that fence should be so if someone is trying to climb it or jump over it or something. So that's something that can be investigated. And I'm sure there is so many type of fences out there mm -hmm. that has been used. It could be aesthetically pleasing as well. That was, that was my only comment. I'm mad at anything? Sean? In regards to the fence, do any of the students, I mean, use that area to go home? I mean, would the fence be more of a, a deterrent? I mean, is it just for a couple of kids running away? I mean, it seems like a lot to do for two times kids ran through. You know what I mean? It, do kids, like, go to school and go through that way? And Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a walkway that leads to the public sidewalk on the street to the west. So students will use that to, to and from school. During the school day, students don't use that area. You hate to put up a fence if... You know, if it's just really limited to a couple of kids. That's what I think we're having a fight over. Okay. Hi. Uh, Chris. Um, I don't have anything else. Don? I have a question. So I'm back to the fence. Well, we're talking to two residents that spoke. I believe their homes would be to the that sidewalk that goes out the street to the north of that. Is that correct? There's three I, homes just to the north of that sidewalk that leads out to the street. If I'm correct, I believe the sidewalk splits, uh, goes we between. To the north of that You're to the north of the right. sidewalk. Yeah, there's three homes. There's yep. Just directly. Right. And and okay. now and so the fence. That's exactly where the alleyway. I wanted everyone to be clear because I th I think I am. That's where the alleyway is going to be. That's where they want the fence. Mm -hmm. and south of that, I, I don't think there's a concern south of that sidewalk. I think it's right behind those three houses, right where that new alleyway is going to be, um, just so everyone's clear. I, 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 don't, I don't think, it didn't sound like everyone was clear because they keep bringing up the sidewalk. I think the proposed area is north of that sidewalk, right where that alley is going to be, so you divide that alleyway from the backyards. I don't think it's a terrible idea. I think it could be just talked about a little more. It doesn't look oh. like it. No, no there's no not. fence now. Yeah. Um, we got the rain. Well, we we did get that. Light, they proposed no cameras. Uh, lighting on the alleyway. Is there a couple pole lights going up there to illum illuminate? No, that? they're they're actually mounted on the building. A on that it's side. just perimeter lighting on the yeah. building. Yeah, yeah, just some wall packs on the building. Okay. So you added trees because you heard at the at the meeting from other residents that they would like a little more. Yeah, at the at the variance hearing, um, at at that time, the main concern was 
the, the backing up and the beeping um, from the garbage trucks and the delivery trucks. So I, I think we're kind of working through that with some of the delivery and operations and timing of that. So I, I think that might be less of an issue now. Um, and, and maybe those trees are not necessarily needed. If, if there is a fence that needs to go in there, maybe the offset can be the less trees. We still do have a tight budget to work with here. So maybe if you know the fence is the way to go, maybe we can swap out some trees yeah, I, for the fencing. You know, I mean, I, I would encourage for them three homes. Obviously, the homeowners are very concerned about it. Mm -hmm. Came here, um, and as Don pointed out, for those three homes, you know, work with, in my opinion, the intention is to do not just a chain link fence, but an oblique fence that, that really blocks it, really blocks people from going over it. And then maybe you you put in some uh, bushes, you know, preferably with thorns to stop the kids. From <laughs> <in there. laughs> I don't know. Um, but anyways, I, maybe the trees wouldn't be necessary. I think it's something the school board could work with those few residents and come up with a you know a, a, a decent compromise on that. I I, I think that's that's legit. Um, I, you know, security cameras back there would be helpful. Um, you know, I mean, I know you're within budget. They're not proposed. I'm, I'm just I'm saying to... in the future, you know, the, for the school to protect their own property and liability. Um, this day and age, everybody's kind of putting their own at risk. Yeah, I'm willing to bet that the times that it's an issue, there's nobody at that school that's going to be monitoring any camera that would be up. I, I don't see it really providing much of a benefit um the the trucks are a no-brainer though but you know that's logistically with you know the trucks are trying to, trying to avoid the children and the traffic too at, at those times you guys understand that so uh you know we trust the school board it'll will work that way um definitely a safer traffic flow than, than what they've had in the past so that's, that's nice to see um as far as the building goes let's just kind of focus on the building um, improvement i mean it matching panels the whole thing so um much needed improvements there actually for uh, uh an older school building so. uh, as i've said before i was the first uh and proud graduating uh kindergarten class of shepherd hills so, so you're an alum <laughs> so uh, this uh you're going back now takes me home here so it's good to see yeah. the uh the, it's well needed for sure some changes here so. yeah um, and uh, you know the up, upgrades to the the room the modifications it's just learning's a different process these days so um it's looking good um i don't exactly know how we communicate to the school to work with the residents on the fence issue going forward uh, how would we propose that carry i don't want to hold up the school but by the same token i'll have a conversation i do, I do want them to contact those three homeowners and, and see what they can come up with. And get I'll, out there. I'll talk to the applicant. I appreciate that. All right. Um, did I miss anything? Uh, the playground, the gym, kids, the fence, uh, trees on the lot line. Um, and again, the, the, the trees that are proposed didn't cover everybody's lot line. They just covered a few. Um, I think that's what Aaron had mentioned. So, I mean... Just in your conversations, we can we can discuss the the landscape plan, the fencing, and the green infrastructure requirements all as one kind of uh, plan review. Okay. Thank you. Um, appreciate it. So, um, with that, I guess I have nothing further, commissioners. Anything? I was just going to add one last comment. I agree with the applicant. I don't think any cameras would be any helpful at all. Would be right after the fact when something happens. So I would. Oh, it's always after the fact. You wish you had one. So. True, <laughs> but <laughs> so yeah, I, I get you. Um, if nothing else, motion. Okay. Guzikowski makes a motion that the Plant Commission approve the site plan submitted by Andrew Cromey, Oak Creek Franklin Joint School District for the property at 9701 South Shepherd Drive. With the following conditions. One, that all relevant code requirements remain in effect. 
two, that all green infrastructure requirements are submitted for review and approval to the engineering department prior to submission of permit applications. And uh, three, that all detailed revised plans are submitted in digital format to the Department of Community Development prior to submission of permit applications. Deeper seconds. Roll call. Anna I. Sullivan I. Hello I. Laura I. Kavich I. Guzikowski I. Aldani I. Seaford I. And again, we'll have our staff work with the school district. Um, they know where you live, they're going to find. Oh, come on up to the mic. We'd love to get that kind of stuff on tape. Mr. Cromie, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Cromie has been very receptive and easy to deal with. I mean, yeah. we had these concerns we talked, and I know Jason was at the uh, variance meeting as well. So it's, it's, it's not been a rough go. And uh, she wants my trees. She can have them. <laughs> I'll trade them for a fence. Okay. okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, again, you know, we talked a lot about change going on within the city, and, and uh, it ain't just... There's modifications too, as oh, yeah. we talked about the learning and the safety is is just you know way more pronounced now than it ever was years ago. So oh, things understand. are going on and it's changing. So we appreciate you guys coming here and letting us know where you stand and, and no, working I, with the I can understand the progress. I mean, I get up in the morning and I'm able to sit out and look at I don't know how many acres that's my backyard. Well, that's going to disappear. But on the other hand, as long as the commission and and the people are willing to work with us, you know. Right. I guess that's part and of life. And again, so. it, you know, we talked a lot about it a lot. And I, I hate to really just keep bringing it up, but yeah, th things are changing. I mean, I always joke when I got down here, I couldn't get a pizza delivered to my house. So I, you know. The other thing on, on the cameras, if you put up a camera, it doesn't have to be functional. All you have to do is point to a kid. There's a camera there. They don't know if it's working or not. That's, that's a five dollar item. Too, sir. <laughs> right. I mean, so, so thank you. Okay, so very quickly before we adjourn, we're going to plug uh, Dog Days. Dog Days is coming to Drexel Town Square this Friday and Saturday. So if you are a pet owner or a potential pet owner, please get down there, check it out. Lots to see and do in the square. The farmer's market will actually take a hiatus this week. So, uh, but it will return, when's it returning? Following Saturday. Following Saturday, 9 to 1. Uh, it's getting in full swing here as... Uh, the weather's turning and the vegetables and all the good stuff's coming in. So anything you want to say on that, Dawn? Oh, you got it. All right. Um, nothing else. We can adjourn. Rello moves to adjourn at 7.38. Anna seconds. Roll call. Anna aye. Sullivan aye. Rello aye. Lorik aye. Kavich aye. Rizikowski aye. Hold on, aye. Secret aye. All right. Thank you for coming. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Well, have a good one.